Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. I wanted to sit down and do a get ready with me. I got so much new fun makeup that I wanna try. I got some new blushes from Moira. I have this brand new palette from Lawless that looks so beautiful. I also have the new one size foundation, some new lip liners, just tons of fun stuff that I could not wait to try. And also I just thought it'd be fun to kind of chat with you about some things that I've been thinking about lately. There was something really horrifying about the brand and Shein that I really wanted to talk to you guys about. Also, there's a new trend that's supposed to be game-changing when it comes to applying your makeup and it's all about your contrast levels. And I also really wanted to talk about one of the shadiest things I've ever heard of a brand doing before. So if that sounds good, let's go ahead and jump right into it. I already put the Maybelline brow gel on my brows. I've been letting that sit for a while and it's dry now. So I can go ahead and just start filling them in with the NYX Lift and Snatch brow pen. This is in the shade Ash Brown. So the first thing I wanted to talk about, this is just kind of like a crazy story. And I posted this on my Instagram stories the other night. So some of you might've seen it, but Shein, which is that fast fashion company, they're huge. And they also have the makeup brand She Glam. I know, I used to talk about She Glam here on my channel and I did used to order things from Shein once in a while. Not a lot, but a little, you know, a few times. But in the beginning, I really liked She Glam because I felt like the quality was pretty good and the prices were so low and they had a lot of dupes and like really fun things. But then this whole expose came out about them like using child labor, slave labor. Um, there was like this big investigation about it. They were in the news and I just like in good conscience, I couldn't support a company like that. So I ended up, um, you know, I mentioned in a video, this was probably close to two years ago now. I talked about how I'm no longer gonna be supporting Shein, She Glam. Um, I still get emails from them all the time asking me to like collab or do sponsored videos. I just ignore them at this point. But I just, you know, I don't trust them as a company anymore. And based on what the article said about like the working conditions, I also didn't trust any makeup coming out of there because I just felt like it may not be the most sanitary. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm not gonna say 100%, obviously. I haven't been there, I don't know. But I'm just totally basing this off of the news stories that I saw. And recently I've been hearing reports here and there. You know, I browse TikTok sometimes and there have been these videos videos that show people opening up packages from Shein with like dead cockroaches in them. Or um, one person had a video where they showed like little tiny bugs that had hatched and were crawling all over the clothing that they bought. And I was like, what is going on at this factory or warehouse or wherever this is happening? I mean, this is crazy. I've never seen anything like it before, but the worst thing happened a couple of days ago and this was in the UK. Apparently um, this girl who was in college over there, I think, had ordered some boots from Shein and the package came and she was looking, I guess the boots were in like a plastic bag, like a zipper bag, and she saw something moving in there and she looked closer and there was a live scorpion in the bag crawling around. So she called her flatmates, I guess, and her, I think it was her boyfriend, ended up picking it up with some kitchen tongs and like putting it in like a plastic bin. And then they called these like animal rescue people that came and took it away. And I guess they um, figured out what type of scorpion it was and come to find out it was a type of scorpion that lives in China. So obviously like this person who's in the UK, where is she going to get that scorpion from? You know, like it had to have been in the package. I mean, you can't always obviously trust what you see on social media. Sometimes people do things for attention. Um, but in this case, especially given that it made the news and it was sent to this like animal rescue group or whatever. I mean, it wasn't just like somebody posting it on social media. It blew up and it got much bigger than that. And since then, it's funny because on TikTok now, everybody's posting these videos like where they get their, you know, their Shein package and they're like opening it outside or they're opening it with like gloves on. <laughs> and it's hysterical, but at the same time, it's not. It's actually really, really scary. <laughs> All right, for eyes, I'm gonna be using the new Lawless Dreamy Dozen Volume 2. This palette looks so beautiful. And I mean, okay, it's a neutral palette. I have a million of these. Um, you know, it has 
the warm tones in it. It also has a cooler kind of taupey, smoky gray, but I can't help it. I'm a sucker for these colors and I've heard so many great things about this formula. So I really want to try it because I love Lawless's lip products. I talk about those all the time. I love their blushes, but I've never tried their eyeshadows before. I was really happy when they sent this to me. So I figured I'd do kind of a warm tone look today. I do have on this sweater. By the way, this is just a quick side note, but this is a cashmere sweater from the brand Quince. And I've talked about them. I've kind of worn some of their sweaters in my videos before, but I've never tried their cashmere. And these are $50. So they're really like, that's an amazing price for cashmere and everything from them is just it's like the highest quality this is their basic crew neck cashmere but they have so many different options they have cotton sweaters which are the ones that I've been wearing like in other videos I'm just so impressed with them as a brand so far I love that they keep their prices low but the quality is actually amazing I just wanted to mention that I'll leave this particular one linked down below I got this tan color and I also got one in chocolate brown that is so pretty um, so anyway I thought a warm tone look would go really well um, with this so I think I'm gonna start out with this color right here which is kind of like this lighter brown I'm so excited to see how these blend I did prep my eyes by the way with the Mac paint pot in painterly a while ago I just wanted to let it kind of dry down before I started blending on top of it which it has so this is really soft there's a little tiny bit of powder kick up in the pan but not too bad it's also really pigmented too so this is nice so anyway another thing I've wanted to talk to you guys about is this new trend that I've been seeing again kind of on TikTok but Kaki here on YouTube also did a video about it so I'll link her video down below because she really goes in depth with it and she's got like an art background so I think her take on it is really probably like more in depth than I'm gonna go with it um, but it's contrast makeup so contrast is basically the difference between your skin color and your hair eyebrows and eyes so if you have have everything really light like I do for example then you would be low contrast if you have really pale skin and super dark hair eyes and eyebrows kind of like a snow white vibe then you would be high contrast and then medium is somewhere in the middle and the reason that everyone is saying it's important to know your contrast is basically it's the main reason why certain things look good on some people and not on others. Like you could have the same exact skin tone as another person and they might be able to like rock a red lip and you feel like it makes you look like a clown. So that's kind of the reason that everybody is talking about this. And you know, I. I kind of hesitate to talk about it because I'm not someone who likes to put anybody in a box and say like you have to wear these certain colors or these colors are going to look bad on you because really at the end of the day it's what you like that matters it's not what somebody's telling you I break these rules all the time when it comes to even like undertones as you can see I have a cool undertone but I often wear warm tones because sometimes I just like to wear more of a warmer brown kind of cozier vibe makeup I don't always want to wear cool grays and pinks and all of that so I need to preface this by saying there are really no rules to makeup at all but like knowing about this I guess it's kind of the makeup nerd in me I just love learning about makeup and just how to apply it and all of the like color theory like I'm really interested in all of that stuff at the end of the day knowledge is power and then you know you do what you want with it so um, as far as like the contrast levels I'll just briefly kind of talk about what is involved with that so low contrast like I mentioned I'm a low contrast there's not much difference between your skin color your eye color your hair and your brows so everything just kind of looks a little more uniform nothing completely like jumps out so some examples of low contrast would be like Amanda Seyfried Kate Blanchett Blake Lively um, Taylor Swift is another one and like me all of these women have light skin tone light hair but it doesn't always apply to just that you could be low contrast and have a deeper skin tone too like Beyonce she has a deeper skin tone than I do but her hair is kind of a similar color to her skin at least right now I know she changes her hair color a lot but um you know it looks kind of again all uniform her eyes aren't particularly dark brown they're like a lighter shade of brown or kind of hazel so she would be considered low contrast or there's also this model who is gorgeous she has really beautiful beautiful deep skin but there's not a lot of contrast between her skin and her hair so she would also be considered 
low contrast. So contrast is not about skin tone at all. It's really about how everything blends together on you as a whole. So on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have high contrast. So that's a huge difference between your skin tone and your hair eyes and eyebrows. So some examples of high contrast would be Anne Hathaway, Zoe Kravitz, Catherine Zeta-Jones. They all have lighter skin compared to their hair and eye color, which is very dark. Um, just quickly, I'm going to put some of this darker brown shade in um, on the outer corner of my eye. Um, so anyway, then in the middle you have medium contrast. And medium contrast is more like, think of Rachel McAdams, Emma Watson, Jessica Alba. There's a difference between skin tone and hair and eyes, but it's not quite as stark as a high contrast person. But there is more of a difference than somebody who's low contrast like me. So the whole contrast theory is that depending on your contrast level, certain makeup is going to look more balanced and kind of bring out your natural beauty more. And it also explains why a, you know, red lipstick or smoky eyes look really at home on some people and on other people, they look really, really made up or like super glamorous. I know that's how it is for me when I wear a red lip or I have really smoky eyes, I always feel like I am super full glam and you notice the makeup first and then me later, you know? So it's like the makeup just jumps right out when I wear those types of colors. So according to the videos that I've seen, people who have a low contrast are supposed to, again, I'm putting this in quotes because you don't actually have to follow this, but they say that we look best in softer, more muted colors and makeup that's dark or bold is just gonna look more glam. You're gonna notice it a lot more. So I'll just quickly use me as an example. Here I have a picture of me wearing really dark dark lipstick and then a softer pink on the right hand side. And in the left photo, you really notice my lipstick first. It just kind of jumps right out at you. And then in the other picture, you can kind of see my face more as a whole. It's like you look at the whole look rather than just focusing on the lipstick. Again, I don't think either one is bad, but it really like knowing this now, I know why I've always kind of felt more made up when I wear a darker color, even though other people I know who are more high contrast, but have, you know, a lighter skin tone just like I do. My sister is a great example, actually. My sister has really dark hair. She always has, like she was born with darker hair. She wears red lipstick a lot and it looks amazing on her. And she doesn't look nearly as made up as I do when I wear red lipstick. Another good example is Taylor Swift. She's somebody I thought of immediately who's low contrast, but loves to wear red lipstick. And she often does heavy eye makeup too. So according to the contrast expert, experts, she should wear makeup more like the photo on the right. And in that photo, she is still wearing a lot of makeup. I mean, you can see her eye makeup, blush and lipstick, but it gives kind of that softer, more ethereal look. While in the photo on the left, she just looks really full glam, which makes sense. She's on stage a lot of the time. So it totally makes sense that she wears that type of makeup as well. And I think she looks absolutely beautiful both ways. So again, it doesn't really matter. It's just really interesting to see what makeup can do. Another person that I thought of right away is Jenny Garth because I, I've been watching so much 90210 lately. I started with season one like a couple of weeks ago and I'm on season four. So whenever I'm like editing videos and I'm just sitting there on the couch and I have that on in the background and yes, it does slow down my editing time because I'm constantly stopping to like watch what's going on. But I love that show. It's so nostalgic for me. And once I started learning about all of the contrast stuff, I noticed that Jenny Garth wears red lipstick a lot and usually she pairs it with a red dress. So I feel like that kind of balances things out a little bit. But Shannon Doherty, who plays Brenda's character, also wears red lipstick a lot. And if you look at them side by side, Brenda is definitely high contrast and Kelly is low contrast. And even though they both look beautiful in a red lip, it looks a little more glam and more made up on Kelly than it does on Brenda. And I think her dark hair and brows and everything just like balances the red lipstick out more. So it just doesn't jump out quite as much as it does when Jenny Garth wears it. And funny enough, contrast is also not like a static thing. You can actually change your contrast. If you change your hair color 
or let's say if you um, self tan and you darken your skin so there's not as much difference between your hair and your skin, that can change the game entirely. So um, you've probably seen some of my older videos or sometimes I play clips where I had really super dark hair. So because I have pale skin, that actually changed me from being low contrast like I am now to more of a high contrast. And again, I'll show you like a side by side. On the left, I had blonde hair and I'm wearing like a really kind of darker liner all around my eyes. And in the right hand side, I'm still wearing a lot of liner around my eyes and I even have had like a dark purple shadow on that day, but the smokier eyes just look a little more balanced on me with the dark hair. Whereas with the light hair, I feel like the smoky eyes just look a lot bolder and more pronounced and you just notice them more, I guess. So I thought that was really interesting. And I even kind of noticed myself just doing my makeup differently when I had darker hair. I felt like I naturally kind of gravitated toward darker lip colors and smokier eyes than I do now with blonde hair. So it was just, I guess, kind of like an instinctual thing. And I guess it's because when I had dark hair, I always felt like I looked washed out because I'm so pale. And I think that's one of the things, like if you're high contrast and you don't wear makeup or if you wear really light makeup, then there's a huge difference between your face and your hair and it just is like something's off. So a really good example of this would be again Anne Hathaway. She looks adorable and so pretty on the left. She has a really soft natural makeup look but on the right when she wears the darker eye makeup and the red lip it almost like brings her to life a little bit more. She doesn't look quite as pale and washed out. Another example is Zoe Kravitz. She also has a high contrast and on the left she's wearing again very natural makeup and honestly she's stunning. She could wear anything um, and it doesn't matter. But on the right, you could see like she's wearing a lot more makeup and it looks really at home on her. And on me, I feel like that would look really full glam. Like she can rock the smoky eyeliner, the deeper lip, the blush, and it just balances her out, but it doesn't really look full glam on her. I think low contrast and high contrast is where really you can make the biggest difference. When it comes to medium contrast, they can really pull off either or. So if you look at this example, Emma Watson, she looks balanced in the softer, more natural makeup, but also when she goes for a smoky eye and a deeper look, it still looks balanced. So, I mean, granted, she didn't go quite as dark on the lips as somebody like with a high contrast would go. It's a little bit of a softer red, but I think if you're following these quote unquote rules, then a medium contrast would have a little bit more you know, opportunity to play with some darker makeup looks and some lighter and either way it would look pretty good. So anyway, like I said, I've just been going down this rabbit hole with this whole contrast thing and I've been watching so many videos on it and I just find it absolutely fascinating, but I'd love to hear like what you guys think. If you like follow these rules or if you don't, if you just wear whatever you like. I know, like I said in the beginning, I do not normally follow all of these rules. Sometimes I do wear smoky eyes. Sometimes I do wear a bolder lip color, not very often, but I think it can look really beautiful. And I also think what you're wearing on your body also makes a difference. And I did see one video that talked about that and I can't remember who it was or else I would link it, but it was one of those channels that talks about like your color season and all of that as well. And she was talking about contrast and she was saying that, um, you know, if you're wearing like a dark, bold color, then you can wear heavier makeup, even if you're low contrast. And that again made me think of Jenny Garth because typically when you see her wearing a red lip, it's because she has on a red dress. And it just makes sense because something has to balance that bright color. If you have this bright color on your body and then your face just looks all pale and kind of washed out, it's not gonna be balanced. So she's pulling in like the red from the dress on her lips. So I think, again, these aren't really like hard and fast rules, but I think just knowing about it to begin with, then you can sort of tailor things to either what you're wearing or if you, like I said, if you self tan, if you change your hair color, you could switch things up a little bit and just kind of play and have fun. I think that's really what makeup is all about. It's not that serious at the end of the day. So anyway, that just took me a really long time to blend my eyeshadow because I was talking, but this palette really is performing beautifully. I didn't really have any issues blending. I was just, I kept stopping to talk. So for my lid, I want to do something kind of lighter. So I think I'm going to pick up this really pale gold, but I might throw in a little bit of this bronze too. Like I'll do the bronze more toward the outer lid and then the gold toward the inner lid. So I'm just going to pack this on with my finger. 
Ooh, this is the bronze shade. Look at how beautiful that is. It's really soft. Like these are nice, soft metallics. There's not a lot of glitter in them, but they are shiny. So if you don't like metallics like due to texture on your eyelids it might be a little bit too shiny for you they're not satins they definitely have a lot of glow to them but they're beautiful and I love how there's not glitter fallout going everywhere again that's just a personal preference I know glitter is super popular right now one thing I really like about this palette too is the different depths of shimmer shades like you have a couple that are really light so if you just want like a really light wash of shimmer on your eyes you could do that or you have some mid-tones like the coppery shade and like this gold and you also have some deeper ones like this deeper chocolatey brown or the deeper grayish brown as well. So you can really go from very light to very smoky with this one palette and I love that. So speaking of trends also, have you guys noticed all of the 90s trends that are coming back? I, especially when it comes to makeup, I'm shocked. Like again, I was on TikTok and everybody was talking about skinny eyebrows. Like there are even these filters where you can try on skinny eyebrows and see what they look like on you. And so many people over there are saying like, oh, skinny brows look so feminine and like pretty and, and they lighten up your face. And I just have to laugh because back when thicker brows came in, everybody talked about how they look so youthful, like thicker brows make you look younger and thinner brows make you look older. It's like there's all these different perceptions and people love to talk about how like one is bad and one is good, you know, or how this will make you look this way versus that just because they want to justify what they want to do. I've seen a lot of people showing like old photos of Pamela Anderson with her really thin brows and how much they want to do them and I just want to scream at them like no do not pluck your brows please because I did that and they never grew back and now I have to fill them in a lot so it's not like a makeup trend where you can just wash it off at the end of the day like the hair is not going to grow back so it's more of a permanent thing if you do it too much I don't know I mean in one way like I'm kind of glad that these 90s trends are coming back because I know I talked about this before in another video, but I feel like everybody looks the same on social media. And the 90s were more of a time when like individual beauty was much more prominent. I feel like so many people look different. Celebrities all looked very different from one another and just more unique. So I do think it's a good thing for the uniqueness to come back a little bit, but I, I feel like now we're just gonna get a bunch of clones going the other direction, wearing all the 90s stuff like skin any brows and no makeup and like the grunge aesthetic. I've seen tons of videos of people with the frosted lips. Remember that? Like the frosty lipsticks? Don't get me wrong. I actually love the way it looks on some people. I just can't wear them because I have too many lines in my lips and anything that has like a lot of shimmer in it is going to just exaggerate all of them. Speaking of which, I actually forgot to put something on my lips, so I'm going to do that. But first, um, this liner, I didn't mention what it was. It's from Lawless. They sent this to me with the palette and it's their Easy Eyes Ultra Precise Liquid Liner. I really like this a lot. I use the brown shade, which is cocoa, but they also have a black. This was super pigmented, really easy to draw on, and it has a brush tip instead of the felt tip, which I really like too. So this was nice. I thought it was a nice skinny eyeliner, great for hooded eyes. But for my lips, I usually put on a lip balm first because when I'm talking, then like my lips start to feel dry. So I got these in the mail from RMS Beauty and they're at Ulta now, by the way. So I don't know, a few of you guys told me and then I had it over there. They have some amazing stuff and I do have a video um, talking about a lot of their products which I can link for you. But this is their legendary lip oil and they sent two colors, but I think they come in quite a few more. So I have Adriana, which is clear. And then I have L, which is kind of like a peachy tone. I think I wanna use the peachy one because it'll probably match the look pretty well. This claims to have the benefits of a balm with buildable color and the high shine finish of a gloss that's never sticky. So I guess kind of like a liquid lip balm. It has a nice doe foot applicator, maybe like a hint of a scent. I know a lot of her products have coconut oil in it, so that could be what I'm smelling. But it's, whatever it is, it's like super mild. You can hardly smell it at all. Actually, yeah, I'm just looking at the ingredients on the box, and the second ingredient is vanilla fruit extract. So I guess it's vanilla, but I have to say this feels really nice. It doesn't give you a ton of color. It's super sheer, but it feels um, a little bit cushiony, but it's thin at the same time. It's not a super thick lip oil. It does have that nice little bit of shine, 
but it feels very smooth and really comforting and hydrating. So I'm just gonna let that sit on my lips a little bit. And for mascara, I'm gonna use the Milk Kush High Roll Mascara. This is their tubing formula. Um, but anyway, getting back to like the 90s trends, another one that I've been seeing, and I haven't seen this in years, are the chunky highlights. Remember those? If any of you were around in the 90s, the super thick blonde stripes in dark hair, I haven't seen anybody do that in forever, but it is coming back everywhere. I'm seeing it a lot. I actually have a friend who's a hairdresser and she said more and more people are asking for that. So it's a big thing right now. I personally haven't seen it in the wild, like around here where I live, but I think it's only a matter of time before I start seeing that as well. So we have the frosted lips, the skinny brows, the chunky highlights. What was another one I've been seeing? Um, space buns. Remember the space buns like the Spice Girls used to wear? That is another big one that I've been seeing everywhere. Of course, claw clips. Everybody's wearing claw clips in their hair these days. I don't mind that. I actually never stopped wearing them. <laughs> like, I didn't even know that they were out of style, honestly. I've been wearing them for years and years because they don't make the little crimp in your hair like a ponytail will. So yeah, the 90s is coming back. And like I said, I'm not mad about it because at least it's something different from what we've been seeing before it's just that you know if everyone starts doing it then I guess we'll end up with all of that sameness again but hopefully you know one of the trends going forward is just everybody embracing their own unique style and not listening to all these trends so moving on to foundation I got the new one from one size this is called turn up the base full beat liquid foundation it says that it's full coverage it has a soft matte finish it's supposed to be waterproof sweat proof long wear and weightless it won't clog your pores. I have two shades here and I'm not sure which one I'm gonna be. I have light 10R which has rosy undertones and light 15R that also has rosy undertones. So anyway we have the two bottles right here. I mean they're supposed to have a rosy undertone. I don't know. I still feel like they look a little yellow in the bottle but I'm just gonna see which one I like better. So this one is the 10 light R. That's actually not bad. I feel like that matches me pretty well. It's maybe slightly too light though. Maybe 15 will be perfect, let's see. Oh yeah, this one might actually disappear into my skin a little bit more. I don't know, I almost feel like I'm right in between these two. Like this one is slightly too light, this one's slightly too dark. When in doubt, I usually like to go for the one that is slightly darker. I could probably just mix these two together also. And I may actually do that just in everyday life, but I'm gonna, I think, wear 15R just because I want you guys to be able to see what one shade looks like. I don't want you to feel like you have to buy two shades and mix them together and all of that. So I'm just gonna use a little bit and sheer it out as much as I can. Did you guys see the video from Robert Welsh, was it? I think it was Robert. And he was talking about a brand that was asking influencers to lie about their products, like straight up asking them to lie. It was really crazy. I mean, I've had some brands ask me to do shady stuff, which obviously I didn't do. I just decided not to work with them. And that was back when I was doing sponsorships. I don't anymore, but I have never seen anything like this. And the influencer that had sent this to him, I mean, obviously he kept them anonymous and he kept the brand anonymous, but it was insane. So apparently this brand ha was launching a setting spray or they did launch a setting spray and they wanted the influencers, like they, when you get a sponsorship, they give you what they call a creative brief. And it lists basically like what they want you to say, all of the talking points. And you have to really make sure that you include everything that they want you to say and do. And that's part of the reason why I stopped doing sponsorships because I don't enjoy just reading off of a script. Part of the fun for me filming these videos is talking about what I wanna talk about. And I don't wanna have to say all of these like talking points like I'm a robot. Like this foundation is a full beat reimagined. It delivers full coverage with only clean ingredients. And you know, like that's not the way that I talk and it's just, I don't know, I feel weird about it. So that was honestly one of the biggest reasons I stopped doing sponsorships. It is not because I find anything wrong with them. There's advertising everywhere. And I think that influencers have just as much right as anybody else to make a living. And I know like there have been some people on certain message boards who say that I act like holier than thou because I don't do sponsorships, but that could not be further from the truth. I said in my video where I announced that I wasn't doing them anymore, that it's really about creativity for me. It's not about the fact that I think there's anything shady about sponsorships because most of the 
time. I think at least all of the people that I watch, I really feel like the sponsorships they take are for products that they use regularly and that they like. I don't think most people are lying. Are some of them? Yes, of course. But I tend to see that more over on TikTok where everybody's like looking to make a quick buck rather than like the people that I watch here in the YouTube beauty community. I think generally people are pretty honest and they're good about disclosing these sponsorships too. Over on TikTok, it's like a whole nother world. They just don't disclose anything. They try to hide it. It's just, it's more shady behavior. But anyway, getting back to this video that Robert did, this particular brand, whoever it was, basically in the creative brief that they sent the influencer, they told them that they had to apply a matte lipstick, like something that's transfer proof on their arm in a swatch and then apply a regular lipstick as part of the same swatch. So like half of it is a matte formula that dries down all the way. And then the other half is more of like a creamy formula that's gonna smear. And then I, I wanna say they even told them to powder over the top half too, to make that even more budge proof. And then, but don't show any of that. Just show like a swatch of lipstick on your arm and then show yourself spraying just the top swatch with the setting spray and then not the bottom one. And then smearing the swatch and watch how the lipstick without the setting spray smudges. That is like not only shady, it's straight up lying and what, is crazy to me is this brand, do they really have this little confidence in their setting spray that they want people to basically cheat and lie and show someone a lipstick smudging and the top one not? Well, of course the top one's not gonna smudge if it's one of the lipsticks that dries down all the way, but the viewer doesn't know that. And they, they said the same thing, I think for the face, like they wanted someone to apply like a long wear, super like dry down foundation, powder it, set everything, and then on the other side, do like a more dewy foundation and put the setting spray on the side only with the long wear, but not tell the audience what you're doing, that it's two different foundations. They want you to think it's all the same foundation and then put a paper towel up to their face and like, oh, look, it comes off over here and not over here. Like that, it just blew my mind. I couldn't even believe in this day and age now with all of the laws and regulations around sponsorships that a brand would even risk doing that. And obviously the person who sent this to Robert wasn't planning on participating in this, which is why they sent it in the first place. But how many other people actually did do it? That is, it's very concerning, honestly. Um, for blush, I got some new ones from Moira. These are their soft blush bombs, and these look like Merit dupes. So they have that same kind of chunky packaging as Merit with like the dome shaped blush inside. They sent me 12 shades and these do really feel like the Merit balms as well. They have that like balmy texture, they're dewy. They're a little bit more on the sheer side and the colors they come in are beautiful. There's 12 shades. So for today's look, I'm gonna use the brown one since I'm doing like a whole brown look. And this shade is called Love Core. It looks so pretty. So I'm just gonna put it directly on my cheek on this side, on the other side, I'll actually put it on the brush and we'll see how it's different. But I'm gonna blend this out with the Sigma Soft Sculpt brush. So yeah, as you can see, it's really sheer, but this color, oh my goodness, beautiful. It's like a rosy brown. You know, getting back to the whole shady brand thing, I feel like maybe brands are starting to become a little more desperate because the makeup industry is so oversaturated. It's like, how are you gonna stand out? How are you gonna make your products look better than somebody else's? It can't be easy especially with everyone copying each other. You know, you wanna make your product look like it's the absolute best compared to other people. But I feel like this oversaturation is gonna lead to brands getting more desperate like this and doing some crazier things to get attention. I mean, I hope I'm wrong and this is just like an isolated incident, but you never know. I had a brand once email me and say, like, we are such huge fans of your channel. We love like all your videos. And then they were like, do you wanna do this sponsorship? And I was like, if you're such a huge fan of my channel, wouldn't you know, I don't 
do sponsorships. It was just like the most disingenuous email. I get those all the time. But anyway, you know, I told them like, I don't do sponsored videos, but I do accept PR for honest reviews. So just keep in mind, I could be giving it a good review or a bad review, depending on how I feel. And they wrote back like, okay, but if you don't like the products, can you just not post about it? And I was like, what? Like, this is not the way it works. Then basically you're telling me I have to do a sponsored video for free because the only thing I can say about this product is that I love it and how great it is, which is basically what you do in a sponsored video. I can't say anything critical and then I'm not getting paid on top of that. I might as well just do a sponsored video at that point. That's not an honest review. Again, it kind of gave me vibes like what the brand in Robert's video was doing where it's like you're not confident enough in your product to just send something in PR and just accept whatever the review is going to be. Again, if they were a big fan of my channel, they would know that I don't bash products. Like if I, if a product doesn't work for me, I'm always the first one to say, you know, it might not work for me, but it may work for somebody else with a different, you know, skin type or if you have this preference. So I I never like bash anything. And for them to be so afraid of an honest review that they're not gonna let me even have the opportunity to do that, I just thought that was crazy. Anyway, as far as this blush, I love this color. It looks really brown when you look at it in the tube, but on my cheeks, it's like the perfect kind of rosy nude shade. It is very um, sheer. So you have to build it up in a couple of layers. That's what I did. But I felt like it built upon itself really nicely. It didn't disturb my foundation underneath, which by the way, I didn't even show you the foundation. I'm super happy with the way that this looks. It is flawless. It's really smooth. It's not settling into fine lines or pores, at least not yet. It gave great coverage. I did sheer it out a little bit with the sponge, but I'm impressed. I feel like this color looks really good. It has a nice undertone. I didn't feel like it was too yellow. And also it's not grabbing to like any of my typical dry spots, like in between my eyebrows here, my nose, like it has good coverage on my nose. It looks really smooth. I'm loving it so far. I'll have to let you guys know in a pinned comment if it actually lasts throughout the day, like it claims. But I mean, so far, I think it looks really nice. For lips, Moira, actually sent me some of their new plumping lip liners. And this, I want to say, is probably a dupe for the Lawless plumping lip liners, which I love. There's one shade in particular in the Lawless range called Pink Slip that is my number one favorite. It's like my ultimate cool toned lip liner. I'll just insert some swatches here so you can see, but these are supposed to give your lips a little bit of a plumping effect. It says that they have a little tingle. When it comes to the Lawless ones, I don't really notice any plumping. I mean, it's a lip liner, so I don't know how much plumping it can actually give you, but we'll see how these Moira ones are. So for today's look, I'm gonna wear the shade Tease, which looks like a lighter rosy brown. And I'm gonna line my lips and then fill them in with this pencil because I have the RMS um, lip balm underneath. So that'll just help to keep my lips hydrated. But yeah, getting back to like the shady brands, another brand asked me to do a sponsorship and this was back when I was doing them. And um, they said they would ship the product right away and I would get it like overnight, but the content was due in like three days. And this was a product that I felt like I needed a little bit of time to test it before I could really like give an opinion on it. And I'm like, if I get this, I have to basically film this video the same day because then I need another day in between to edit and then I have to send it to them. It was just like way too quick of a turnaround time. And brands do this way more often than you would think they would. And I think that's why I've seen a lot of content creators on YouTube talking about how they really only work with brands that they already know and like the products because if when they send something new, I don't know what it is. It's, it's like so much disorganization at all of these brands and PR companies. I can't even tell you how many of them would like send me something and then I need this due like in a day or two. And I'm like, what? I don't even have a chance to try the product. So I think a lot of the reviews that you're seeing, especially over on TikTok, they probably got the product that same day that they're making the video. And you know, sometimes a first impression is okay with certain products. You can kind of get a good idea of how much you like it right away. 
But I would say with a lot of things, you have to really like check the wear time or use it with different types of products. If it's an eyeshadow, you might wanna use it with primer, without primer. Um, obviously base products, so many things can affect it like your skincare or primers that you use and things like that. So you would be very surprised at how much brands do this and they're really not interested in your honest opinion. They don't care what you think at all, like as a creator, they don't care what we think. All they want is just read these bullet points, these these talking points and then post the video, that's it. So like I said, I would have no issue doing that if it was a product that I already had tried before or you know, it was something that I already liked. But for me, those sponsor types of videos just really take away from the creative content that I'd rather be making. Um, by the way, all of these swatches of the lip liners on my hand, I was just trying to see like what color I should wear. They're starting to tingle a little and same thing on my lips. So this definitely is doing something. I don't know if it's plumping necessarily and the tingling isn't bad so it's not like I can't wear this or anything but I just wanted to mention it if you are at all sensitive to any kind of tingle on your lips but anyway here's the finished look I love this it's just a really soft warm brown look but I feel like it's not too warm it's just kind of toasty I feel like it goes with the vibes of the sweater. So I'm really glad we did this. I had so much fun chatting with you guys about some things that have been on my mind lately and trying some new makeup at the same time. If you stuck with me to the end of this video, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It helps out my channel a lot. And if you're interested in watching some other videos, I know I mentioned that RMS one before, I'll just put that and another one right here in case you wanna check those out next. Thank you all so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you all in my next one. Take care guys. Bye.